today I think we're just going to talk about something. Yep. Whatever we usually do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's I not a viewer submitted question. I don't know if it's a viewer. Off the internet? I don't think so. I think, but I, like I, I see people comment a lot about level matching, you know, when they're comparing yeah. things like, you know, where get out the oscilloscope and measure the output of the amplifier to make sure it's the same as the other amplifier listen to it. Right. Stuff like that and stuff. I think it's a topic we should probably cover because there seems to be like a tribal thing going on about that. And, and of course, I'm sure there's a lot of confusion because people don't really have a oscilloscope to measure these things. Like so. most things, this is more complicated than it seems. Initially, you would think, well, if you're trying to compare two things, first things you should make sure you eliminate the variables. The volumes need to be the same between two amplifiers if you're trying to compare them. And intrinsically, that seems very reasonable. But for the issues we'll talk about, there's a bit more of a problem to that because, of course, we're humans and the end result with these products is going to be a human listening to them. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we're listening to these in the context of an existing system yeah. with speakers or headphones, your ears, your room, etc. So the changes, to us at least, the changes that are made when you swap out a piece of gear, whether it be a DAC or an amp or, or hell, even a speaker or headphone, um, are sonic not just, you know, spec driven. And uh, most people in the higher end understand that because they listen to every goddamn thing they change in the system, right? That's what they do. So bottom line is that, uh, you know, it isn't necessarily always about necessarily making sure that everything's exactly the same as if you're in a lab testing this stuff. So like anything, this is a discussion, right? This doesn't necessarily mean this is absolutes, but we're talking with a finite entity, a human, actually trying to listen to these things. So if you're not looking for absolutes, if you're not looking for uh, like a reference that you're going to use in a studio or something like that, and the ma vast majority of people aren't, if you're just looking for musical enjoyment, then these things don't matter nearly as much as people perceive. Yeah, this discussion isn't about measuring the amp. It's about right. listening to the amp to decide which one you prefer and that's quite subjective it's not really about the measurement at that point it's i think how a, it works a good way to put it is it, say you, you had two different headphones and you want to compare this headphone to your new headphone that you just bought right and people always say oh you got to make sure everything's all the same because whenever you get a new product new thing you're all hyped up you're excited you're going to think it's better than it really is a lot of times that might be true so you want to make sure the volumes are the same between the two headphones so that when you're listening you're not biased or influenced by the difference in volume. But that is more difficult than it appears. Um, because let's say in this example that there's a headphone that for whatever reason you prefer louder. It sounds better when it's louder to you. Or it distorts less or is more pleasing to you. It's more capable of playing louder. And you prefer that. But this other headphone can't play that loud. So is that not an advantage for that one device? Right, it's capable of doing it, the other one isn't. So now you have to basically set the volume to where they're both capable of doing it enjoyably. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you know, the the way that some amplifiers handle bass is quite different than others. Same with DAX. You know, I mean we listen to this stuff all the time. They're all over the place. Well yeah. You know? I well I know it it is similar like to guitars again. I don't know, it always comes back to that. Yeah. But yeah, like um some amps just you need to run them, you know, harder. <laughs> higher volume yeah. to make them sound best yeah to get the actual bottom out of it yeah yeah they some of them just don't do real well in the extreme bass the, the circuit design has to do with the power supply capabilities it has to do with a lot of things it's the amp it's the way the amps made it's they're all different what i do is i just adjust the volume i usually adjust the volume per track anyway so i'm actually adjusting the volume on a per track basis i'm not level matching to the song for christ's sakes mm. okay i'm just listening to the track and I'm adjusting the volume for the track, and the, all tracks vary. So you got to take that into consideration. So let's say you got two different amplifiers, and one doesn't is leaner sounding, which means it doesn't do bass real well. It tends to be a little bit, and the other one has gobs of it, right? If you set them at the same level, technically speaking, one's going to sound way bass heavy than compared to the other one, even though they're set for the same level at one frequency. All right, let's say that's one kilohertz or whatever the hell it is, all right? So what I do is I just, instead of worrying about that, from a subjective standpoint, is I just adjust the volume for the track, just like I would anything. It doesn't matter what amps in the system, doesn't matter. 
I'm adjusting it and I'm listening for what I appreciate out of that track. So it's not about the levels, it's about the track, about the music. You know, that's the way I do it. Yep. And, uh, I understand that approach. And I think in reality and practice, that's how most people would do it as well. So you could kind of perceive it as more or less like the appreciation factor for these various devices. At what volume does this thing no longer sound good to you? And you're going to set it a notch below that. Right. And these volumes are going to be different for different gear. Some things you could just crank way past your comfortable listening levels. Other things, they start distorting, they start sounding bad, they get harsh or bright or too boomy or something yeah, happens for, where you can't turn it past that point. Yeah. So it could impact your perception of how enjoyable this is. Well, that's a point. I mean, you know, if the electronics are already harsh to begin with at nominal levels, turning it up just probably makes going to make it right. a lot worse, right? Where a clean sounding amp that doesn't have that whatever distortion is in it, you can turn it way the hell up and appreciate the music in a different way. So, yeah, to me, you know, and again, there's no way to do that with just saying, oh, it's got to be the same level. It's got to be what you're appreciating out of the system. Yeah, testing it in the exact way you're going to actually be using it, right? Yeah, well, that too. Yeah, because that's how you're really yeah. going to use it, right? So, yeah. You're not going to be checking the levels, I hope, yeah, when you're listening well, no. to it. Maybe you do. I don't Maybe. Know. Well, even <laughs> Most that, people don't. Even now, you could look at, like, power ratings, too. You could look yeah. at the specs, but it's, we found that to be meaningless. It's uh, in terms tricky. Of, in terms of how the amp sounds. Yeah, we got a video on that one, but the yeah. specs are kind of... Yeah, right. So it's the same deal, you know? It's like, well, you know, just because... Uh, one amp says it's 10 watts and one says it's 2 doesn't mean that the 2 watts going to sound bad or the 10 watts going to sound better. Yeah, or certainly whatever. it doesn't. Yeah, so it's it's a mixed bag, you know. But what do you do? Because you could set the volume to the lesser of the two if one level on the one amp is considerably lower than the other where you think it sounds best. Well, what if you send it to that on the other amp now? Um, does that necessarily mean that you have an even listening experience? And you can't do the converse as well. You couldn't set it to the higher level because then your other amp is probably going to distort or sound bad or doing something that's undesirable. So how do you find the right medium? You can't set it to the best of each. So you're kind of setting to this point where you're actually not going to listen. And I don't think most people measure the level coming out of their headphones when they're listening. Right. For most right. people, the enjoyment is what they're looking for. They, they want they, to enjoy the music. Everyone's got a limit. They know what loud is to them. Yeah. Some people right. are limit some people's limits are way but when you're setting these up you're obviously you're not going to set it above that yeah. i would imagine so both of these are going to be within the bounds of what you consider to be comfortable right. i would hope um but sometimes an amp or a headphone or a setup in some way can sound better to you um quieter and other times it could sound better louder well, you set per track what do you listen what do you set it for when you set yours the volume control <laughs> nothing in particular really no? <laughs> no i mean are you I mean, I, I guess I can't really pick it out either. It's not any one thing. Yeah, you just kind of just, just the listen overall and sound. Like, yeah, See, so. I have a method for this one. Yeah. Depends on the gear. If it's portable, especially, I always hammer the volume, see what happens. <laughs> Step one. Yeah. You got to see how it distorts, what it sounds like, how loud it gets. Well, maybe raise it till you get to hammered. <laughs> no, you just hammer it. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what headphone you're yeah, playing you know, into. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm assuming the headphone could tolerate it, but... Not a sledgehammer. More like a 16 ounce. You turn the volume all the way up, you see what happens, right? I see. I mean, obviously, if it's insanely loud, you stop. But generally speaking, that doesn't mallet. happen in portable gear. Turn it a little up, see how it distorts. And then you get a, a really quick... Uh, summary of more or less how this thing's going to distort what it's going to sound like when it's beyond its reasonable limit and then i find a volume level where i can no longer hear that distortion and then i prefer typically a volume a smidge below that or right around there mm. and that's more or less my max and so if at that level i consider it to be uncomfortably loud i could turn it down from there but with portable gear that's very uncommon and on desktop gear it's kind of the same thing although usually you don't run out of power before you run out of more or less uh, the will to listen at that level. Yeah. Um, but as long as I can't hear distortion beyond comfortable listening, then I just listen uh, on a track by track basis, more or less what I find most enjoyable. That's and kind of like, there's a few factors yeah. that impact this. Sometimes it gets too bright, sometimes it gets too boomy, sometimes it gets harsh. Right. Depends on the gear, right? I, there's always like that, uh, what shit said this, the ooh spot or something like that when they did that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I forgot that, what that thing. thing it has some name. Yeah, name yeah. It definitely has a name. <laughs> when they did that thing, yeah, it was like that. You got to find the right level. This. Oh, no, yeah, remember like they had that guy, yeah. that like mathematics guy, did yeah. that thing. Yeah. I, I don't know. It yeah. was called something. People in the comments are probably yelling. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. 
but you find the right level that for you is desirable and that's what i set it to um and then I adjust it typically on a track by track. Yeah, we had this discussion uh, not that long ago, um, a few videos back about uh, what is flat, you know, and that kind of also brings out the point that you know, the, the recordings are all different levels too. What the, each individual instrument within the recording is all different levels relative to another recording. So it really boils down to what the hell you're listening to. I mean, if you're keying in on female vocals or you're keying in on the piano or the guitar or or the car, the, the guitar gets harsh on that particular amp. You're gonna, like you said, you're gonna tone it down. Yeah. So now everything else is sub subdued at that point. So yeah, it's it is a problem. But the thing is, is you're you, I get I get, you get all that. But you gotta judge, like you said, you gotta judge the amp for you if you're gonna like it or not. If you where are you do like it at your listening of it what you you're going to actually use it yeah because it desirable to you're you? comparing it to another you're comparing yeah. two things which one do i like better it's pretty pretty straightforward when you look at it that way you know without complicating it with anything else it's like which it one is a doozy I though because i understand the level matching approach it's very rational it makes so much sense because then it tells you what you feel like at least in more absolute terms does this actually sound better than this amp it's certainly necessary if you're comparing measurements right you need to know you need to know this thing if you're actually measuring well, it. Well, yeah. But to listen to it, yeah, it's more of a feel thing. Well, I think the reality is people don't really care if something sounds better at the same level. What they care right. is, is it going to be more enjoyable for you to use? Right. Uh, it's an overall experience. And that doesn't necessarily work if you're setting the levels exactly the same. It doesn't necessarily tell you whether or not one's more enjoyable. Because sometimes something might have a trivial little flaw that creates some issue with a particular instrument in this track or something like that, yeah, right. and it bothers you more. It just takes a certain subset of distortion characteristics to piss you off. The ear picks up on it, and your sense. Some people are sensitive to it because they've heard it many times before, and they just don't. They don't like going there anymore, and then that's it. It doesn't matter what volume level the thing's. <laughs> yeah, you're done with that amp, you know, or whatever. <laughs> So well, I guess what volume level do you set both at? Because you'd be playing the strengths of potentially one of the amps. So yeah, yeah. well, like that's we true. talked about before. Yeah. yeah, you could set this system up to fail. You could set it up so, in particular circumstances where there's a big difference between amps, you could set it up so this amp sounds bad at this volume level and the other one sounds good. Sure. Um, maybe you know exactly the volume level you listen to on your normal amp. Well, and, and maybe the other amp doesn't play particularly well, well for a multitude and, and of reasons. And that's the that. point of fixing the volume. That's the, that's the negative side of it, yeah. is that you're not really comparing what you might like or not like about each amp because you're fixated on a single point. An arbitrary point that may not be realistic. Right, not subjectively. Hmm. So, And that's the downfall of it. You know, you're, you're missing out on what that piece might be capable of, particularly if you're looking at higher volume levels. And you go up and you find that, Wow, that the second amp or whatever the one you're comparing to has amazing overhead. You know, it can do it doesn't run out. You know, where the first one's like yeah. you go up a little higher and bam, it's done. Mm. And it's like at a particular level, you, that weakness might not appear. I think know? that's actually a significant demerit though in this side because let's say you had a multitude of amps, you have six, ten amps that you're trying to A B. Now this does become very difficult to do. The scalability is poor. And so I could see in that case a level matching making more sense. But still, now what? How, how does this, what level do you pick? How do you optimize the system yeah, right. so that it works without uh, any bias? Right. Because there's it, always going to be some degree of intrinsic bias. There's going to be some preference. You're certainly setting the level for your hearing and what you like on, on that track with that first right. amp. So now, okay, now that's an arbitrary setting, right? Mm. So now you take that and say, okay, now all amps will have this setting. Mm. That won't work. Right. It won't work. You'd have to reset the clock every time you do it, somehow. I guess it's the same as, um, like, distortion measurements at just, like, one specific frequency. You know, yeah. just right. one kilohertz. Right. Well, that doesn't tell you about 20 hertz, Right. Though. Now, you could find the worst, yeah, right. worst spot in a, in, a, in a distortion characteristic or the best sweet spot uh, just by looking for it. You right. know? It's Maybe the, it gives you an indication, but not the whole picture. No. So, anyway, that's, that's why I just adjust... Well, I'm trying something. I just put the headphones on, and I just turn, adjust the volume for the track till I, I like what I'm hearing out of the track. And I'll really fine-tune it. I mean, I'll get, I could spend maybe a couple seconds on it if I don't know what I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few seconds is a lot oh, wow. <laughs> for an Android. Oh, here we go. <laughs> from a Star Trek. I think the trouble is there's always going to be intrinsic bias, and it seems somewhat intuitive that setting the level the same on all the amps 
would minimize that, but I don't think in practice it really does because it doesn't tell you whether or not you're going to enjoy it more. Um, but of course, the downside is if you had a whole string of amps and one's way more powerful and you like listening loud, yeah, you probably will prefer it because it yeah. can play louder. It's almost cheating at that point. So it, it's <laughs> a double-edged sword there, but I don't think level matching is necessarily the solution for the average consumer. No, you got to listen to what for what you like. So I hope that clarifies how we look at it at least and everyone's got the way of doing it and hey if measurements work for you measuring level works for you yeah more power to you that's cool you know whatever whatever you're after but uh, in the end it's as long as you're happy with listening to your tunes mm -hmm. well that's our goal it's mm -hmm. the whole goal it isn't for everyone though no it's true but it is ours yeah and on that note thank you everybody for watching take care of yourself <laughs> <laughs>